Hey everyone, Shaper 1000 here. Sorry about the wind, but if I turn you this way, the sun's going to be in your eyes. My hair, my first solo of 2024. We've been here many times. This is the Whitlacoochee River. I wanted to camp on down that way, but somebody had that spot taken, but that's okay. So I'm going to camp here. Um, we camped, like I said before, uh, I had my hammock run between these two trees. And I wanted to be down to the other place because of that shelter, but someone's already got that taken up. So, and it's supposed to rain all night. It's pretty much rained all day. So I'm walking through swamp weather, <laughs> swamp here. And a picnic table, someone moved it. Fire ring, someone moved it. So it's farther away from where I wanted. But I'm still gonna set my hammock up there. And I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna put up a tarp. I just bought a cheap tarp until I can get a regular backpacking tarp that'll fit in my thing. But I had an eight by 10 here. So we're gonna set that up. I'll get you set up over here. And um, I'll just speed you up through that. Let's get the hammock set up. Get the tarp set up in case it rains. Then we're gonna get ready. We're gonna do a little fishing. Maybe we can catch some fish. I brought some for supper. That's not what's in there. I just saved a bag. Uh, this is uh, freeze-dried spaghetti or um, dehydrated spaghetti. And I also brought some ribs. I've been marinating all night, so I got some ribs in here. So, all right, let me get you set up and let's get see if I can get this uh, hammock set up without getting it too wet and muddy because it is muddy but I'm gonna go in between these two trees right here because last time I had it set up here in between it, it was fine and it's not real bad in here so I mean it's a little wet but I got my boots on they're waterproof so yeah um, let me get you set up Let's get into this first solo camp of 2024. Stick around, guys. Should be fun. Uh, we'll talk about Bigfoot here in a little bit. set up and I'm gonna put my stuff inside I brought a blanket to put down on the bottom because I don't have a uh, underquilt yet so I'm gonna put a blanket down I'm gonna put my air pad down 
and then my uh, it's only supposed to get down in the 50s then I'll put my sleeping bag down in so now I'm gonna do something this time I'm gonna put a tarp over this to come out so I can sit out here and cook or whatever Can't find the end. All right, so I shortened it up. I'm gonna put the long way out this way. So I need to get some more cordage. And I brought some poles for this thing. Since Monkey can drop me off right there and I didn't have to hike in, I brought a little extra stuff, right? Who wouldn't? I mean, if you gotta use it. Uh, yeah, I'm in a campground, but I'm still camping. There's nobody here. There's one people down there. Well, like two or three people, but, you know, one group right down there. Other than that, this whole section here is mine, and they're, you know, a quarter of a mile that way. So let me get, grab my poles. Here's my stakes. Well, here's my stakes. Here's my poles. They're just old tent poles. And... They adjust out so this is what i used when i was uh when i made my uh, this one gets stuck when i made my uh my trailer tent so let me get these unstuck and get them extended out and i'm gonna put them in the corners here all right so i never sat this up like this before but Let's uh let's give it a shot. That's got some shock cord wrapped around. It's not paracord. I don't know where I got it or I think I remember what I used it for, but it's real stretchy. I got rope, just in case. All right, you get the idea. I'm gonna change that out for some of that white rope so I can see it better. And then I, I think it's gonna be all right. Um, I should have probably went over the back of the tent more, but uh, it, it's gonna be all right. Just enough for me to sit my chair under and get in out of the rain, so. All right, so I still don't have my bed roll in here. Looks like you guys are fogging up. Hang on a second. Really humid out here probably inside the lens cover I think so I'm gonna pull the cover off and clean it but there it is these decided to work and then I can lower one corner or both corners if I if I want to and then I got plenty of room to sit in here and cook so I could have went over went over this more like see I got a lot of grommets here but I have to change it later I just got it in these little 
carabiners here so that wouldn't be hard to change but now I can put my bedroll in I wanted to get that put in or get the tarp set up because you know it's looking like rain so and it can come down within five minutes <laughs> down here in Florida you Floridians know what I'm talking about yeah, I could have scooted that back more if I wanted, but that'll be all right. Like I said, it's not, I don't have to worry about the tent. You know, I've been in a downpour in that thing, it doesn't leak. This is just for me to sit under and cook or whatever, so. All right, let me get you, get this lens or something cleaned off. I'm not sure what's going on with it. I guess the humidity. So if you guys remember our last camp out, I was almost out of this stuff. And it was just, pretty much like a lighter flame I mean it didn't want to do anything so I was just about out so went and bought me a new can of this last night heck yeah I ain't gonna run out now because I can't use it I don't I've been through this bag three or four times and I don't know where my stove is It's not a big guy I can build a fire but I could have sworn this is my pillow could have sworn I put it in there let me look some more found it I, I had already taken it out and I was like I could have sworn I'd just seen it well what I did was I took it out and I set it up there I set that down on top of it. It was actually right there beside it. And then I moved that because I'm going to set this little, I don't know. It's supposed to be, it's a tarp. <laughs> I'm going to set it on the ground so I can set this over there underneath the uh, awning in case it starts raining. And then I'm going to get, guess, get my reel, my rod ready to do a little fishing. We'll, We'll throw it out there and see, try our luck at fishing. And then we'll talk a little bit about skunk ape, Sam Squanch, Bigfoot. Very interesting stuff. Okay. Did you hear that? <sighs> All right, stick around guys. Okay guys, so it's a little windy. It still looks foggy in that. Um, let me see if I can do something about that. It looks really foggy up here on top, but I cleaned the lens and uh, see if that's any better. No, 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 no better. All right, so anyway, I'm getting a hit. I just cast it out. So. The last place we camped at, you guys, the very last camping video we did, the last adventure of 2023, um, we was at Potts Preserve, or I'm at Potts Preserve now. We were at Flying Eagle Preserve, and I'm gonna read you a story about that later. There was a Bigfoot sighting out there a few years ago, and, uh, Yeah, it's documented. Um, so, supposedly true, but. Got something hitting on here. I got my, have my line unlocked because I had to go over there and get the stand for the camera, or the tripod, dang it. Now I'm in some weeds. All right, let me get this caster back out. I don't know what's going on with this lens. I don't know if it's just the, the way the sun is. Let me cast this out. Okay, let me try that again without wrapping it around the end of my pole. There we go. About 15 yards. 
But yeah, so that's supposedly uh, Citrus County. There's been more sightings than I thought here in Citrus County, Florida. Um, that better. Oh, uh oh, getting a hit. But like the three, there's three like Texas, Florida, and Ohio. Ohio, they're all this. Their sightings all over Ohio. So. I mean, they're all over the United States, don't get me wrong, but like hundreds of sightings. And I didn't think there was that many here in Citrus County because we're like on the west coast, west central, kind of in the middle of Florida, but on the west coast. Like I said before, we're about 16, 18 minutes drive from the, from the Gulf Coast. So, but there's, there's a lot of, um, sightings down in the Everglades. I'd love to get Monkey to go down there, but she's afraid of them big snakes. I'm getting a pretty good hit here. Let's see if I can get it. Probably small, I mean. Got a van looking like they're wanting to come in and do some camping. But I was going to do some Bigfoot calls tonight, but I don't want to do that with people down there because I know they could hear me, especially being on the water. Yeah, they're leaving. Used to be able to drive back in here. Not anymore. When we first started camping here, you could. Then they changed it because people would come in days like this and get stuck and then they'd have their buddies come try to pull them out and then they'd dig ruts and it was hard for them to keep up mode like that, so. Hmm. I think my hit stopped. Yeah, it did. We get this cast back out. So, but anyway, I got some stories. I screenshot it on my phone. Like I said, these are actual doc documented cases of Bigfoot around this area um, pretty exciting I know I've heard some tree knocks over in there I just heard like two more right before I turned you guys on that's probably wind you know moving the trees around but do I believe in Bigfoot yeah you know I mean everybody says well there's no proof technically there is but if you want to look at proof well absence of proof does not prove absence. Wrap your mind around that. You know, I mean, as far as that and, uh, and, and like ghost sightings, you know, not everybody's making this stuff up. You know, not everybody's hoaxing everything. Um, so it's like, you know, like that. It's, you know, have you ever seen a million bucks? You know, and I don't mean looking at, you know, I'm not talking to a millionaire out there. Look at my bank account. Have you ever seen a million dollars sitting in a pile? Not many people have. But does that mean it doesn't exist? No, you know, that's not what that means. Um, do I think there's some around here? I think there could be. I know there's been, you know, I've had a couple strange experiences myself. There could be Sasquatch around this area. I mean, if bears can live around here, because I know I spotted one at Pot, or at, Flying Eagle Preserve and I, that one here. So, you know, I mean, I've had two bear encounters in the past seven years, so. And we're not that far, far away. Um, so. But, yeah, we want to get to Fort Cooper, too, and check it out. Um, so that, that might be our first, this is my first solo adventure. So, yeah, we'll have to take a day and go to Fort Cooper and check it out. I just got chills for some reason. Probably because the wind's blowing and I was sweating. But, yeah, I'm telling you, it's just, you know, not everybody makes this stuff up. Not everybody's dreaming this stuff. Not everybody's hoaxing it, you know. Because I, for one, don't make anything up. If I capture something on audio or video, if I post it, 
that's up to you to decide, but I guarantee you I, I didn't manipulate anything, I didn't fake anything, I didn't stage anything. And that's why I've been on hundreds of, you know, paranormal investigations. People are like, well, you know, why didn't you film it all? Why didn't you do a show out of it? Well, I'm not a show, I'm a YouTube channel. I'm not gonna make my people, my viewers, sit and, and watch 45 minutes, 50 minutes and nothing of me walking around. Did you hear that? And playing this stupid music in the book. No, we didn't hear it because you're playing music, so there probably wasn't anything there. You know, to me, that's boring. It's fake. You're trying to be somebody you're not, you know, and then you cut into sitting in the dark or sitting in front of a red light doing your little interview. So then, that's when we was walking down the hallway, and all of a sudden, and then they cut back to the show, and it's like, Look, this ain't the travel channel. We're all YouTubers. Let's act like it, you know? But yeah, anything I have on my paranormal list, you know, is real. Unless like around Halloween time when I do those stories, you know, I tell, you know, fictional stories. But if it's a made up story, I will tell you, okay, this is totally fabricated. I made it up. But anything you see or any audio I have, it's real. That's what the camera captured or the recorder captured had nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? Um, maybe I can misconstrue something. Maybe, you know, well, it was, that's not really what it was. It was this. Could be. Could be. That's why I would say, let me know what you think down below. But there was that one time that guy really pissed me off. You know, he just flat out said, ghosts don't exist. What are you talking about don't exist? You know, Oh, that was a miniature spider in your camera, and I had to do a video on that. Look, it, it's impossible. A spider can't get inside that ring doorbell camera. And he's like, well, you know, there's other things that can set that motion sensor off, uh, uh, like weight. And I'm like, weight? Last time I checked, I didn't have any scales in my front yard to weigh something to turn that camera on. This guy was a total idiot. But for somebody just to come out, ghosts don't exist. Get off my channel, you know? I mean, geez, to me, you don't exist. You, you know, maybe you're a bot. You know what I mean? It's like, you can't just tell somebody something like that, you know? I mean, if you don't believe in it, fine. Why, are, why, why was you so intrigued to watch that video then? You see what I mean? Trolls or whatever, they don't exist. You want to argue about, it. well, science proved that ghosts don't exist. Science proved that, that Bigfoot ex don't exist. No, it hasn't. If anything, we've got more proof that Bigfoot and ghosts exist than science has that they don't. You know, and they're the same people that pray to Jesus. I know I don't I don't get into that kind of stuff on my channel, but just using that for an example. Jesus died and you know, you're praying to him. What what? <laughs> you know what I mean? It, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you know, well that's different. Well, if you believe in one person that died and is now spiritual and living among, around us, you know, why couldn't it happen to someone else, you know? I mean, you got, these are all factors you got to think about. But Okay, I'm going to cast out again. I'll kick you on when and if I get a bite. Here we go, guys. I didn't even know I had something on here. Oh, never mind. I waited too long to set you guys up. Not sure what it was, but... It felt decent. The guys just went past in a boat and I was talking to them. They said they hadn't had a couple bites, but that's it. And then I just went to reel in and recast and there was something on here. So I moved you guys over here and <laughs> he got off. Okay, I'm getting a hit. There we go. Fish on. Ooh. Nice. Oh no, I don't have a net. Mud fin. Man, I hate them things. Let me see. 
All right, let me see if I can get something to get him out of there. I don't think, I think, I think I left my good stringer at, at the house. I mean, I could always use We'll get him out with this. The owls are going at it early. Three point three zero pound. Cool. All right. Let me get my pliers out. They're pretty, pretty long. Um, get an idea here. Twenty one and three quarter. Cool. All right. Let me get my needle nose out get the hook out of him we'll get casted back out all right here we go guys hung up. There we go. I'm going to wear this one down. I think he's about the same size as the other one. Got me tangled up in that moss. He might be bigger, I don't know. Try to let him go out a little bit to see. If I can get him to wear down a little bit. All right. Well, since I don't have a net just to reach down in there, I'm gonna I'm gonna wear this one out. Try to, and I'll kick you back on when I bring him up here. We'll see what he weighs. The other one. What the other one weigh? Three point three zero. Man, I heard something down here. I didn't see any. I heard a big splash. It was like somebody fell in the water and started swimming. It was probably a gator. But I didn't see anything. It must have been around that cove back in there. Whatever it was was huge. Must have had to be a gator chasing something or whatever. All right. Let me see if I can get him worn down. All right, guys. I got him up here. Let me see if I can get the scale in him.
So if we can get it to zero or lock on, there it is, 5.24. Wow. Let's, uh, let's measure him. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't bite. I was just getting ready to build a fire and, uh, I see my, my pole holder bending. About 24 and a half inches, maybe 25. Let's see. Twenty-five inches and five pounds. Five and a quarter pounds. Cool. All right. Let me get him back in the water. All right. It's a little windy, but seeing as how it rained all night and all day, and it's nothing but a mud hole out here, I'm gonna go ahead and build a fire. Got her going. Now I'm gonna bring you back once we got a good fire going. All right, fish on again. This is what number three. I should be eating these things. Yeah, baby. Another one, we're not gonna weigh him, he's kind of small. I'll lift him up for you. But uh, yeah, he's kind of small. I'm not gonna weigh him. He's probably about pound and a half, maybe two pounds. <clears throat> wow, that was close. I felt a tooth. He swallowed the hook. All right, let me get the hook out, and I'll be back with you. I got it locked on at 2.08, so two pounder. Uh, just had a nice gentleman. He lives over here on the water, and uh, talked to him for a few minutes. Hell of a nice guy. So he's going to check my channel out. So if you watch this, it was nice meeting you. Uh, yeah, he said, you got your nice primitive setup out here. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I told him, I said, man, I, I was going to book for two nights, and this was the only night I could get, but as you can see, there's nobody here. He was like, they ain't going to say nothing to you. He said, where are you from? I told him, you know, just right in town here. Psst, they ain't going to say nothing to you. You want to stay another night? Stay another night. Nobody cares, which is true. All right, I'm going to get this back in the water. I got to work on my fire again because... It's still got a little bit of flame, but I'm messing around with this thing, so, you know, <laughs> all right, I'll be back with you. All right, so I'm still messing with the fire. I mean, it's going, but it's not going great. Had a hit a minute ago, but Monkey's going to stop out here after a bit. I think after she gets her mom fed, she's going to come out and visit, bring me some more pop, because I only brought six, and, uh, so she's gonna bring me some more pop and let Bruno come out and sniff around a little bit. So, yeah, that guy was cool, man. He was on an e-bike. I'm rolling up, he's like, YouTube, YouTuber? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, well, I figured that camera. And <laughs> so, yeah, hell of a nice guy. Yeah, it's, it's dark. It's a lot darker than what it shows in the camera because it's, it's five after six right now. So, but yeah, it's pretty dark over there in my, in my little, <laughs> over in there. So yeah, I'm going to mess around with the fire a little bit more and, uh, 
I think I think I'm gonna get some rain, but I'll be dry inside my shelter there and my hammock. Yeah, like I said, I've been pinned down out here. And, uh, it really poured and wind blew. Didn't leak a drop. So and then the tarp, I got it just in case I want to sit out, sit out there and cook or whatever. I'm just going to cook on my little stove. I got it already screwed together and it's ready to go. So, but I'm not hungry right now. So I'm just going to get back and tend. To, ooh, the fire's going pretty good now. tend to the fire and then I'll be back with you guys if I catch another fish yeah if I've been eating that man well that second one at five pounder that would that would have been enough for two people really uh, that last one that two pounder you know it would have been enough for a meal just one meal for me but okay guys I'll be back with you this had a major hit on that thing it was going crazy and I was over here messing with the fire, of course, and, well, it stopped. There's a bat. Uh, yeah, I don't think he's on there. I'll check check my bait anyway. Bait's still on. I don't know what you guys can see and what you can. I did bring my big light. It doesn't last super long, but I did bring a flashlight. And you know I've got I've got night vision. Night vision needs some batteries up, but I think I've got enough for tonight. So, all right, guys. Uh, again, I'll be back with you. My hat's all crooked. <laughs> okay, it's a little windy, but I decided to cook out here. I got more room. Don't have to bend over as much. And yeah. I forgot my spaghetti. All right, hang on, I gotta go get my spaghetti. I'm gonna have to change your battery here in a few minutes because down to 23 minutes. But hang tight, guys. Okay, let's get this puppy fired up. I don't have any matches or a lighter, so. There we go. And I forgot my gloves too. Oh, gone it. That should be enough. So I'm gonna let this come up to a boil. I'm gonna go get my gloves and I'm gonna change your battery just in case. And, uh, and we'll put our spaghetti that I made or dehydrated in there. Hold on a second, guys. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I brightened you up a little bit because I thought it needed it, but he didn't. Okay, so Get the battery changed out. Dump some of this in here. Smells like I just made it. I might have added too much water. That's all right, because if I ruin it, I've got backup. I've got some shoot got some pork ribs over there that I boiled down didn't boil them down parboiled them I guess and then uh, I marinated them overnight in some seasoning and some teriyaki sauce bears what bears All right, I'm gonna let that boil down and we'll see what my dehydrated spaghetti tastes like. <laughs> Is that much? Uh, we still got an hour and 54 minutes on this battery, but it goes quick, man. What's going on here? 
Alright. Okay. I've got this boiled down. It's rehydrating very well. So while that's doing that, I just peeled some of this off the bone. I'm going to put it on here. I don't have any butter or oil or anything, so I'm just going to keep flipping it. And I'll bring you back when it's time to eat. Okay, guys, so we're going to try the Paschetti first. Kind of anxious to see how much flavor it lost. Because I know the noodles turned out really good, the noodles I did. So, still hot. Boner appetite. <laughs> Guys, I, di I didn't make a spaghetti. If I said I did, I didn't. Monkey made the spaghetti. I, all I did was dehydrated some. Tastes like the day she made it. Um, might let it hydrate a little bit longer. Tastes fine. In the middle of bear country and I'm eating pork ribs and spaghetti. <laughs> I got chicken gizzards and shrimp over here that I'm using for bait. I haven't had a bite in a while. Try the ribs. Mm. Very good. Alright guys. I don't know where monkey's at. <laughs> I didn't hear any horn blowing but I wasn't paying attention. It's been really windy. Can't hear nothing. Then I had that running. The stove. It's uh, 7.15. This is Friday the 12th by the way. So 7.15. So either she's not coming or she couldn't get in the gate. Now those are brand new locks down there. But usually there's a blue one that's, but they have inscribed on it like REC for recreation. So I don't know if she couldn't get in or if she's just waiting till later, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, when she comes out, uh, well, I'll kick it back on regardless, but yeah. But after I eat, we might adjourn over to the hammock and sit underneath the, the tarp. So, but yeah, the fire's died down now because I was just burning palm fronds. They go up pretty quick. Um, so, yeah. All right, let me finish my supper, guys. Monkey's here. <laughs> All right, I was just getting ready to tell you a Bigfoot, well, I'll read you a Bigfoot story, documented story, so I'll kick you back on when she gets, I don't know, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, guys, I'm back. <laughs> Monkey's here, so I'm going to read. <laughs> Draining. Yep. Starting to. So I'm going to read one of these, uh, I might, she's trying to make me leave. He said he had chest pains. Yeah, I'm having chest pains, but that's all right. <laughs> so, this, uh, this guy was hunting around here. Uh, remember the place we camped at the very last time? Yeah. There. That's where it was? Yeah. Really? At, um, yeah. Uh, cool. um, Flying Eagle Preserve. The September of 2011. It says, uh, State Florida, Citrus County. I measured two tracks for you, but no picks. I got a camera phone now, but... It says nearest town Floral City, so it's mm -hmm. kind of in between Floral City and right. and Inverness. Right. So nearest road 480. So yeah. Mm, cool. It says observed. I hunted in most of the 
management areas in and around this the state I was on a bow hunt in the citrus wildlife management area I go out one hour or so before daylight I may have read this before but I just find it interesting uh, hey I I put my stand out the day before and just parked in pitch black dark area I go out and walk to the other side of the SUV to get my stuff out before I could do that I heard something jump out of the bushes behind me I stood motionless and a strong smell of defecation was there yeah I would shit myself too <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it says uh I talked about the smell and it disappeared I opened the door and got my flashlight to see what was there it was gone by the time daylight rolled around there was six or so more cars that had come through and wipe out all the tracks that I could have found this was the first of five incidents of it uh, two weeks later I moved my stand to a different area due to all the other hunters I went out an hour before daylight again and parked got in my stand oh no oh no we gotta Crap. go hang on guys okay we're back <laughs> it was pouring we went underneath the thing and then I realized she don't have a chair so we came and got in the truck yeah so where was I okay right before daylight I heard a call unlike anything I have ever heard before I have heard hoops or hoops I have heard hogs deer and all types of animal calls including bears okay including bears this call was was not like any of them as the morning went by more cars and hunters came to the area I heard something big running towards me and it sat down 20 to 30 feet in front of me on the only blind spot I had I waited for about 10 minutes and figured another hunter had sat there so I cleared my throat to see if it was human and it got up and ran off real fast I couldn't see it uh, two or three weeks later I decided to go fishing at the Gulf and was driving past the area I hunted at when out of the wood line a big hairy black Bigfoot ran in front of me with my bright lights on it took three leaps from wood line to wood line. The run is what floored me. The knees almost hit the ground before it came up again and out to the side of its foot. Okay, and it says, also noted, the dome-shaped head. Yeah, see it says flying eagle here. Mm-hmm. I noted a, it had a dome-shaped head. Uh, he was by self, uh, flying eagle. Time and conditions, early morning. Uh, environment, there are freshwater pits and ponds nearby and lots of different woods. Now, this is a follow-up investigation. <clears throat> uh, it says, I spoke with WK over the phone and he shared several encounters with me that occurred between 2010 and 2011 on one occasion WK stated that he arrived early to set up his tree stand after parking and getting out of his okay so it's, it's just um, you know going over what what he he had had told them so Okay, the latest encounter happened very recently when WK found a long set of tracks running parallel to the forest road. 
he stated that a half a mile of it eventually met with two other sets of tracks. He described the tracks as being about five and a half foot, five and a half feet between the toe of one print to the heel of the next print. I'm five foot seven, so about my height only that was its stride. So it's taken five foot strides. Um, it's pretty big. You can't do that's tall. That's more of a stride than you are tall. That's one step. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty a big. Lot. Huh. Uh, let's see. And that the the footprints were in a straight line, not staggered as with human tracks. He also stated that the tracks never went onto the road and that there was no arch noted on any of the tracks. WK took care, careful measurements of each individual's tracks and gave me these dimensions. The track he followed was 18 inches long, eight and a half inches wide, and the toes and uh, at the toes and five inches wide at the heel. The track was 15 and a half inches long. These are the track dimensions that they that he had seen. Uh, the next track was 15 and a half inches long, seven and a quarter inches wide at the toe and three and a half inches wide at the heel. The third track was eight inches long and four inches wide at the toes. These smaller tracks were found alongside the 15 and a half inch tracks. So maybe a parent and a juvenile? Maybe. The third was the third track. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, um, WK did not have a camera with him when he found these tracks. He did take a few pictures with his cell phone, but stated that the pictures, the picture came out too blurry to be recognizable. And also in the Withlacoochee State Forest. It's, it's, uh, the Withlacoochee State Forest, that's where the, the, uh, that cemetery is we went to? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, while the Withlacoochee Forest goes down into what is it, Sumter County, and right, it's huge. Yeah, it is um, quite big. It's five hundred thousand acres of pristine pine swamp and hardwood forest. That's a that's a half a million acres. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which includes spring-fed ponds, rivers, streams, and abandoned mines. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, and, that'd be fun. and is home to an abundance of wildlife. This track abuts other wildlife um, sanctuaries, which added to added together creates a massive natural corridor that extends through much of Central Florida. Corridor, so it's kind of mm -hmm. you know a big place they can go. Hmm. And there was one I was reading. In the uh, Ocala State Forest, too. Or Ocala Forest. Ocala. Uh, I don't know what yeah. town, but that's a big forest, too. Yeah, it is. But it's not as big as this area. Uh-huh. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna have to bang the camp. Mm -hmm. See, there's one Hernando City here. Lakefront Drive near US 41. Mm -hmm. 
in March 1961, the Boy Scout troop I belonged to was camped on Gilcrest Island. What's that sound from there? Gilcrest Island. In Lake Sala, Apopka Citrus County, Florida, near Hernando City. The, uh, the days are... The day's activities included hiking, swimming, camp, craft, night games, and uh, finally on Saturday night, the ever-popular campfire. The camp out was very exhilarating, and when lights out came, all found it easy to fall asleep. As junior assistant scoutmaster, it was my responsibility to make sure everyone was in their tents. Close the door. Alright, let's just do this. Hang on. Good night, night vision. Ooh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and was in their tents and and uh, secure for the night. As a boy of 17 years of age, the position was one of importance and was not looked upon lightly. The day's duties were completed about 11.30 p.m. I walked for approximately 15 minutes from the campsite down a moonlit path with a flashlight to take my evening constitutional. The return trip was uneventful and it seemed unusually quiet for a location normally filled with the sounds of frogs, crickets, and occasional bump in the night. Oh, I think I'm getting sick. I decided to take a shortcut through the forest to bypass a bend in the trail and came into a clearing with what appeared to be a stump. I reached a distance of about six feet from the object when it stood up. The creature was five to six feet tall, weighing about 200, 200 to 300 pounds. I was six foot one inch tall and weighed 120 pounds. The figure in front of me was much broader than, than I with very long and heavy arms. Okay, it was much broader than I. And it had uh, very long and heavy arms. The moonlit source was behind the creature, so consequently eyes or facial features were not discernible. The light revealed a body glistening with long hair, what seemed to be an eternity, but was only a few seconds. We stared at each other, and then he was gone. The creature ran with a long, fast, heavy stride, as it crashed through the palmettos until it could be heard no more. The campsite was still was still when I returned. Frightened, I went to wake up the scoutmaster and he suggested a good night's rest and all would be well in the morning. <laughs> Alright, that's what I'm gonna read right now. Alright, I'm gonna get off here for a minute. I'm gonna I'm fogging up too. I'm gonna get a drink. Oops, sorry. Hun. Sorry. I'm going to get a drink of pop and have a cigarette, and I'm going to decide whether I'm going to stay or go. So, all right, guys, hang tight. Oh, man, I am fogging up bad. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Oh, geez. Wow. Hey, so, Mama talked me into going home. <laughs> So, I'm going home. <laughs> so that's going to be the end of this video. I'm going to come out in the morning. We got everything except the hammock and the tarp. We're going to come out tomorrow and get that and do a little fishing, right? Yeah. So, she said she would leave her phone with me, but then I don't have my phone to read my story. So, um, I guess our next thing we're going to have to get is a satellite phone. Yeah. yeah. That way, if I needed help, I could get help. Because mm -hmm. there's, as you saw, there's nobody there, and the nearest person 
is up here and I guess they weren't here when she came in were they? No, uh uh. So just the camper was there so yeah. um I don't like him being by himself. If there was other campers in there, I ain't no problem, you know. Yeah. People will help if there's someone gets into trouble. But with yeah. his heart condition and he's out here and saying he's having heart problems, no. Well I don't know what it is. It's just having pressure on my chest again so yeah but yeah so I don't know I do, uh, I'll just have to get a satellite phone and that way I'll mm -hmm. I'll be safe uh, he's, he's back what I said he must be back because he's, he's got there. a fire yeah he, so he must have left and okay I saw that white van there pull in earlier oh did you yeah it turned around back there huh so there Wait. is somebody out here. Yeah. Yeah, they pulled back there and then turned around. Got them on videotape, so. But yeah, so I'll have to get, I, I'm just gonna, there's no way around it. I'm just gonna have to get a satellite phone. I'm not supposed to be doing, honestly, <laughs> any of this stuff at all, am I? No, they don't want him to do any activities. They don't even, they, they don't even want me walking through Walmart. No, he's supposed to use cart and he don't. He walks. And... Yeah, so. But I just can't lay back and die, you know? No, you can't. We all have to. You have to keep living, so. I, I told Monkey, I said, if something happens, post this video. Tell my story. <laughs> she didn't think it was funny. No. <laughs> mm -mm. So, alright, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Maybe I'll have a fishing video for you tomorrow. How's that? Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, so. I'm to try out my new rod. Yeah, she's got a new rod, so I don't know if you guys saw that video, but she got a new rod, mm -hmm. and so she wants to try it out. So we'll definitely do some fishing. So tomorrow, I think no one's going to mess with that hammock. So. No. And we got everything, all the you know, like my pack and all my camera stuff and all that, of course. But so the only thing that's out there is my hammock and the tarp. So. But it'll be alright. Nobody bothers anything out here, so. No. Yeah, alright guys. Well, thanks for watching. <laughs> Sorry I had to bail, but Monkey made a good point, you know. If I, you know, if you're having a heart attack or something or a stroke, you can't yell. No. So nobody's going to be able to hear me. Mm-mm. So, you yeah, know. To, that one, that stroke to, in the bathroom that time, that was enough. Yeah. So, you don't want that again. No, so she's got a point. If I had a satellite phone, I'd be all right. Because even her phone, see, my phone still, I don't have my phone turned on, guys, so. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. No, not so. yet. So we're at the gate. But, yeah, so I don't have, I don't even have my phone turned on. The yeah. gate is wide open. Yeah, so we're somebody. not going to, I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, somebody left it open. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, that's a good point. But yeah, my, you know, and her phone is spotty back there. Yeah, it's in and out. Sometimes you got to walk around to get service, which, uh, you know, if I'm having a stroke or heart attack, I'm not going to be able to walk around holding the phone up looking for service. No. Mm -hmm. So, all right, I got to get my seatbelt on. Shea Bear, Myth the Man, Legend, gone for now, Monk. Monk says she's out. So, thanks for joining, guys. Man, it was a beautiful night out there too, wasn't it, hun? Mm-hmm. It was one beautiful night back in there. And except now it's raining. But it's well, still nice. Yeah, but warm. I had the tarp and yeah. you know my my tent, my hammock tent don't leak, so you know, that's not a big deal. That would have been I I would have been out probably before or maybe around midnight I probably would have been out. Yeah, you think so? With that rain, yeah. yeah. But that's okay. Better safe than sorry, huh? Yeah. All right, guys. Well, again, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And Monk, say bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs> so, and thanks for listening to my, my story. So, I'll go ahead and, since I'm going home, put this, get this up for you tonight. And uh, so you can see it tomorrow or maybe tonight if you're up late enough. So, all right, guys. I'm gone for now. We'll see you in the next one. So if it's not raining too hard, we'll we'll uh, 
we'll do a little fishing tomorrow. Yes. So yeah, we'll come out in the morning and do some fishing for you. She can try out her new pool. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye guys and take care.